General Motors expects to electrify its entire product line at some point, and on the truck side, that starts with the 2024 Chevy Silverado EV, an impressive pickup built to shatter the perception that EVs have to sacrifice power for efficiency. Along with consumer trims, fleets can also choose between two work truck models, the 3WT and 4WT. Fleets with a focus on productivity may opt for the 3WT, which has a 12,500 pound towing capacity and just shy of 400 mile range, while the 4WT excels at energy efficiency with a 450 mile range, though has a 10,000 pound max towing capacity. Both leverage GM's Ultium platform base, also used by the Bright Drop Zevo cargo van, electric Chevy Blazer police pursuit unit, and Equinox SUV to name a few. But is the new electric Silverado suited for your job site and or off work needs? We recently visited GM's technical center in Warren, Michigan to find out from Stephen Marlin, EV consultant manager at GM Involve, the OEM's fleet business unit. Stephen Marlin, General Motors Involve. I am an EV consultant manager, so I'm working with fleets that are bringing these things into uh, service in their fleets. And that's an important thing to know about this because Silverado EV work truck, for the first time in GM history, we launched a product fleet first. So we're at the front of the truck here. We've got this space. You know, I, I kind of thought, you know, normally when you talk about the business end of a truck, it's just the back end of Silverado EV work truck, all business. So there's business end up here too. Uh, lockable, waterproof storage. Uh, also a plug up here. So if you've got gear that you need to charge or have plugged in running while you're rolling, you've got a 120 up here that you can plug in. Uh, this is what comes with the vehicle is a, uh, we call it our uh, portable cord set. So there is this outlet that you can plug into uh, that comes with the vehicle itself. There is another 120 volt outlet in the back of the cab area here as well. There's all your usuals. You kind of see some USB-Cs there. There's some more in the front so people need to charge phones, things like that. We've got plenty of plugs, outlets in the back for them to be able to do that. Moving all the way now to the uh, to the charge port back here on the driver's side. Uh, today we are at the CCS charging standard port J1772. Silverado can charge up to 19.2 kW on an AC charge, which is the fastest possible rate at that. Similarly, if you go to a DC fast charge and you're going high speed charging, you can go up to 350 kW at that rate. That means at a 350 charging rate, you can put up to 100 miles of range in 10 minutes. So quick stop, get some energy back in, get back on the road. So we are capable of doing the fastest charging uh, ability today. Another piece I'll bring up on the outside as we do this uh, back in the back of the truck is, uh, I mentioned here's your four more 120s plus a 240. I think about it from the standpoint, it's a work truck. Uh, probably a very small MIG welder, right? of a chop saw, an air compressor, we'll talk in the inside about what it means running that power and accessory off there because you are using battery that's also used to move around. So there's some, some tools and things that we have on board the vehicle to help you keep safe, make sure you've got energy to use for what you need it for. What we're talking about really here is V to X capability. So vehicle to, you name the device that you want to plug it into. Uh, up to and including V to G. We are working with the utilities on how this can be energy that could go back into the grid. You see all these mobile batteries rolling around, see that as an asset out there from energy. But at the same time, you go without power, this can power your home for up to 20 days. Uh, kind of keep it down to your basic needs during that time window. But Silverado EV with his battery, um, V to house, V to H, you can keep your home running, keep that energy instead of having a generator be able to use this. Uh, and we, through our Altium Power Up accessories, we've got tools and equipment to make that a reality for drivers as well. Um, comes with the, with the soft tonneau cover, GM accessories and parts we do. We have a hard tonneau cover, which makes the whole thing really lockable. So the tailgate is locked, we'll add the hard tonneau cover. You've got that locked up. Everything stays nice and secure back there. We have in our accessories catalog, back racks, ladder racks, the stuff that you need uh, on board the vehicle. We also work with the upfitters. They're coming out with equipment as well. We'll have a topper on the back of it. So all of that equipment available for drivers to, to upfit, configure the truck for what they need for the job that they're going to. Part of what I refer to when I talk to people about driving EVs, the three T's of EV driving, the three big things that are going to impact your range. Terrain is one of them. I will say this, Google built in, I go to put in a nav route, it, that is going to look at the topographical settings. So when it gives me my arriving state of charge, it's factoring, oh, you're going to drive through Appalachia, you're going through some mountains, your range is going to look like this. 
Oh, you're driving no, across Kansas, where, where Stephen grew up, that part of the country. That's kind of flat. Your, your range is, so it, it will, in the NAV system, if you're using Google built in, which is one of the advantages of that, it, it, since it's literally communicating with the onboard systems on the vehicle, it can factor in topographical and temperature. Oh, look, you're going to be doing this on a, on a very cold day. It's going to factor in that cold mm -hmm. weather. When you push the button to go into trailering mode, which activates your trailering wires and all of that, it will immediately adjust the range based on you pulling, in the case of the 4WT, the 10,000 pistol, it's maximum trailering capacity. So you'll see the range drop to what this vehicle would be at if it was pulling a 10,000 pound trailer. So then as you're rolling, you may see your range slowly start to come back up because you're like, oh, this trailer is very aerodynamic. And you know, it's, it's my sleds are in the back. So I got one of those fancy ones that's aerodynamic mm -hmm. instead of just some big old flat box I'm pulling behind me. Or it might start pulling it and be like, oh, this isn't so hard to pull. And you'll see that range start to creep up. But what it does is it kind of defaults to the worst case scenario. So part of what you can do through the DAF system, you put in your mm -hmm. navigation where you want to go to. It is going to show you your state of charge when you arrive. And it's going to assume, okay, what if you're just going to go right back? It would show you your state of charge upon return. So you then could go through and look, okay, I see this, this uh, charging station along my route. It's only five minutes out of my way. It's a fast charging. And set that up. So when you're going to a DC fast charge station, the battery temperature needs to be a little bit warmer than what it is for operation. So as part of what it's going to do before you arrive at that station is recondition that battery in advance of you landing. So as soon as you plug in, it is ready to receive its highest power charge. So that's one of those things that just helps make things easier for the driver. Maybe the other thing they'll put in, we all know that trailering affects range. So I'm going to put, I'm going to go into trailering mode, kind of watch over here what happens to my range when I do that. I'm going to trailering mode and you can see it going down right there. So as a driver, and it's assuming the worst case scenario, it's assuming that I've plugged in a 10,000 pound trailer mm -hmm. in this truck. So the range is, is um, always looking at driving conditions. It, it's same thing with the nav. The nav recognizes the route that you're going. If it's really hilly and it's going to have a negative impact on range, it's gonna show that your state of charge would be based on the type of driving it expects you to see. Charge settings. I can set up a, a charging amount. I can set how high I want that charging to go to. I can set up to precondition the cabin before I get in. So I'm using shore power uh, to, to precondition the cabin, make it comfortable the way that I like it. Um, going back, um, charge assist is where I'm using the My Chevy app. So I'm signing in, making sure that my app is connected there, using a tool within my app to do some settings. And then I can also set a schedule uh, for home charging, or I can just pick a, another location. So when you do create a schedule, it, it, it asks, you know, it, it is ba location based. You're setting it by the days. Um, you're setting when you want to leave, and you can set if you want to do spree conditioning when you want to leave. So if every day you leave at the same time, you can have it set up to say, I want it to be charged at this state when I leave, and I want the cabin to be at this temperature when I go. And it will do all that with shore power, saving some of that battery injury. Inside of this screen here, this is really uh, your controls and safety. The big one that's inside of here is where you can get into things with the power base back there. So if you are on the job site uh, and you're using the power base in the back of the bed, you want to make sure that you're not using up all your energy that you need to, to, to drive home with. You can go in and say, listen, I want power base to turn off if it gets uh, if it gets to 35% because I know I, I need that range to get home. And say, I am a utility company. I've got wigwags. I've got light bars. I've got the spotlight. And I need to run that off the 12 volt of the vehicle just like I've done in the past today. But instead of putting a bank of hard switches in there, we're gonna actually put something inside the vehicle. We've actually got these switches set inside of here. So here are my aux switches up to 10, and I can actually label it. Oh, this one's powering my winch. So I could, I've got some custom things that I can put on here for what I put on running off of that. And it, on that screen, I can also rename it. So I could, I could maybe not use one of those icons. I could leave, leave it like that. And each one of those then you could put off and there's a block that would tell you, okay, that's where I've wired my aux, whichever aux switch you've done. So it helps them save time because there's not a bunch of other wiring to run, right? There is, they only need to worry about the wiring going from uh, the power junction up under the hood there to whatever it is that they're powering. Let us know what you think of the Silverado EV in the comments, and don't forget to like and subscribe to see more content about new commercial vehicles, tools, and equipment.